so glad that my Jesus lifted me you know that I'm so glad that my Jesus you know that I'm so glad yes Jesus and we're singing glory hallelujah you know that Jesus well you know that I'm so glad that my Jesus, you know that I'm so, so glad that my Jesus, you know that I'm so glad that Jesus lifted me. I'm singing glory, hallelujah, you know that Jesus, well, you know that Satan had me bound. But my Jesus, oh, you know that Satan tried to have me bound. But Jesus, don't you know that Satan had me bound? But Jesus lifted me and we're singing glory on our way to heaven, you know. Well, you know that we're on our way to heaven, you know, Jesus. Well, you know that on our way to heaven, Jesus. Don't you know that on our way to heaven, Jesus lifted me. I'm singing glory. I'm so glad, so, I'm so glad that I'm so glad, I'm so glad, you know that I'm so very glad that I'm so glad, I'm so glad that I'm, I'm so, I'm so, I'm so glad that Jesus lifted me. I'm singing glory, hallelujah, you know that Jesus, well, you know that I'm so glad that my Jesus, I'm so glad Jesus lifted me, I'm so glad. My Jesus lifted me. Oh, we're singing glory, hallelujah. I said, Jesus lifted me. Well, I said, I'm so glad. I'm so glad my Jesus lifted me. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I said, I'm so glad, I'm so glad my Jesus lifted me. Oh, we're singing glory, hallelujah. I said, Jesus lifted me. Uh, I tell you, I, I didn't know y'all invited me to a revival. My goodness gracious, I like revivals. My goodness. Truly, we thank God for his goodness, for his mercy, and for his grace. Because God is a good God. God is so, so good. Somebody say he's mm, mm, good. What a wonderful God we serve. Who else woke us up this morning? Started us on our way. Kept us clothed in our right mind, gave us use and activity of our limbs, uh, and gave us a mind to come out and worship his high and holy name. I tell you, what a God we serve. Man, there's some singers. Y'all got some singers around here. My, my, my. I, I told my wife, I said, honey, it's like a revival. She said, yeah, I like this. I said, hey, amen. This is a good stuff. Uh, if, you, if you don't mind, if you don't mind, if you don't mind, I, I, I want to sing a song too. 
My goodness gracious. I hope you don't mind. I hope you guys know Mansion Robe and Crown. Yes, God. All right, all right. Song leaders out there, who y'all y'all know who y'all are, but I, if I need help, help me. Okay. There we go. I'm going to trade my earthly home for a better one, bright and fair. A quiet lift to prepare a mansion for children in the air. And I'll join them in that land where dead no sorrows can be found. When I receive my mansion, mansion, ro robe and crown, church, I want to make church. Robe in the crown, their love will always abound. Let me, O oh Lord, your throne surround. Lord, please reserve a mansion, mansion, ro robe and crown. The weather there is always fair. There's sunshine day and night. No cold, no rain will fall there. For the sun shines ever bright. And I'll need no heavy garment. I'll just wrap my robe around. When I receive my mansion, mansion, robe and crown. Lord, I want a mansion, come on, robe and duck around. And their love will always abound. And let me, my God, in your throne surround. Lord, please reserve a mansion. I want to roll, roll, bank around. Uh, uh, my head is bowed in blood and now for the work that I try to do. Uh, uh, but one day I'll be rewarded uh, with the crown so bright and new. Uh, and I'll wear a smile so bright for there'll be no cause for a frown. Uh, where I receive my mansion, I want to robe, robe and crown. Come on, mansion, no oh Lord, robe in the crown. And then love will always abound. And let me, my God, in your throne. Around, Lord, please reserve a mansion, mansion, roll, roll. One more time, I want a mansion, oh Lord, roll it the ground, and then love will always abound. And God, your throne surround the Lord. Please reserve the mansion. I want to roll, roll, big round. Amen. All right, I got it out. I got it out. Had to get it out of there. I want to let you know that God is in the blessing business. Came all the way from Baltimore to be with my family up here at the North Church of Christ. Brought my beautiful bride with me up here. And, and, and Brother Wood, I, I know how long it's been now. This September, the 25th, It'd be our 40th wedding anniversary. That's right. 40th wedding anniversary. And I told her, I said, if you ever 
pack your bags and say, I'm gone, my response is going to be, where are we going? <laughs> That's right. That's right. We raised four children. We got a daughter, um, er Erica, she's 39. Got a, a son, Eric, he's 36. And I got another uh, son, he's a, a Navy SEAL. So don't mess with me, he come out the water on you. Uh, uh, so he's 32, and I have a, a, a and then we, uh, 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 I thought we was done, we went to the Poconos. I don't know why we went to the Poconos. So now I got a 21-year-old. I struck that off the list after that. I said for the Poconos. But God is a good God. And I want to let you know, since you guys got a revival feel in here right now, I want to keep it. I want to keep it. And what I want to help you to understand, and I pray I can do a job bringing this to you is, is that we serve a God who loves praise. He loves when this world recognize his greatness, recognize his authority and his power, recognize that he is God and God alone. And when we, his children, get in that mode where we're able to recognize him, then when, I believe when, 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 when praises go up, blessings come down. Some of you ain't getting no blessings because ain't no praises going up. You got to be like the song leader. He said he lost the job. He ain't the only one. He lost one. He'll get another one. That's how you got to think about it. You got to think. You got to be a forward thinker about the greatness of God. And not only is God great, he placed you in his great church. So you great. And don't let nobody, no matter what's going on in your life, don't let nobody talk you out of who you are. You are a great child of God. And one day you're going to hear him say, well done, my good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. I'm going to make you rule over many. Come into the joy of the Lord. I want to let you know on this morning, I just wanted to thank the leadership for having me down here on today and the brothers and sisters here for just, um, um, just being such a good, good, good group of Christians who don't mind praising and worshiping God. Now, I want to start off with my lesson this morning in Isaiah, the 40th chapter in the 31st verse. The Bible says, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew thy strength. They shall mount out with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I want to start off by saying the Holy Spirit inspired Isaiah to write this about what was coming. About one day, he's going to break the bond between Jew and Gentile. And he's going to do it through a man named Jesus Christ. And when Jesus comes, he's going to teach us how to show enough live in Christ Jesus. I want to let you know that when you are understanding God's word and God's will. You got to understand that God has something that he wants to say to those who don't mind understanding that, I'm, that he's on our side. The Bible says here in Isaiah chapter 41, and, and, and in the backdrop, why y'all thinking about it? Because y'all y'all been here at church a long time, and y'all know the, 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 the story um, in Acts chapter 3 about the, about the beggar and two broke preachers. You know the story already. I want that in the backdrop to let you know that what happened in that story in Acts chapter 3 came from the one who has something to say to us right now. In Isaiah chapter 40, 
in verse number 25, he asked a question. God said, to whom then will you liken me? Or shall I be equal, said the Holy One. Meaning, who do you compare your God to? Who, 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 who dare, who do you dare place next to that name? We got to understand that there's sometimes about trusting in God as a collective church. Once we do that, it elevates you. Knowing that God is on your side. Amen. Knowing that God said he'll never leave you and never forsake you and gave you to per permission to rejoice. Amen. So who is like our God? Verse number 26 says, lift up your eyes to the hills. He said, he said lift up your eyes high and behold who that he created these things that bringeth out their host by numbers. He calleth them all by name, by the greatness of his might. For, it says, for that he is strong in power, not one thing. That means God said, I'm so strong, who, I will bring you out and you won't miss a beat. You won't miss a step. I love what, 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 what Paul said in the book of Philippians. Paul told us in the book of Philippians chapter 4 and verse number 6, he said, be careful. Yeah. Don't worry right. about nothing. That's right. That's right. He says here, but in everything, yeah. by prayer. I mean, talk to God. God said, who do you liken me to? Talk to me. Yeah. Yeah. You got a God that want to be talked to. Brothers, now you got to understand why the sisters want you to talk to them sometimes. They don't want you to keep it all up here. I love you, boo. You ain't even saying out your mouth as a pair. They know. They talk to me. And God is the same way. God, through prayer, he wants us to talk to him. And I love the fact when he says, be careful for nothing, before he says it in verse 4, he says, rejoice in the Lord sometimes. Always. And again, I say, rejoice. Then he said, let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. We got to understand and believe this, that when the Bible says here in Isaiah chapter number uh, 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 40 in verse 31, he said, for they that wait upon the Lord. He shall do what? Renew your strength. But what you got to do? You got to wait. You got you to gotta, you gotta wait. Just keep praising him. Just keep blessing him. Just keep magnifying. Don't worry about what's coming next. You just praise God. And let God show you what's next. Don't take it out of your hand and put it in the hand of the one who said, who is like me? And then you got to understand also, he said here, uh, they shall mount up. Who? We. Those who are going to come and, uh, under the blood of Jesus, they're going to mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Here's what I hope you understand. Maybe it's just me. You can't, I, I, I don't believe, and I, I'm turning it on, my, my, my friends are turning that on. How, how is that? We could be good. All right, man. Listen, I don't know about you, but I know the world that we're living in right now yeah. is up, that we're up against. You got to be in a situation where you truly believe God's word when God said, and uh, 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 Isaiah 50, 54 and 17, no weapon. No weapon formed against me. Stop right there. Because see, some of y'all, sometimes we walk around, we walk around scared. We walk around like we ain't nothing. Like, what's happening in the world? It's all messed up. Well, God already told you. Paul already told you in the book of Timothy, in the last days, perilous times going to come. It told you everything that's going to be happening. It's happening right now. Why are you shocked? Don't be shy. 
fact that the world is going crazy. You just grab hold of God and you hold on and don't let go. You say no weapon that is formed against me shall prosper. You got to understand, brothers and sisters, the type of God we serve and what God is able to do. He said here, he says here that, 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 uh, from against me shall prosper and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn everyone that talk about you. Stop worrying about folk talking about you. Listen, no, just listen. When they tell you, because you ain't gonna stop them from talking about you. Only thing you can do is make sure it's not true. But you can't stop folks from talking about you. You just make sure what they say is untrue about you. See, we gotta understand that we can't let that type of stuff mess us up. And then he says here, not only that, thou, uh, this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is in me, saith the Lord. Go, if you don't mind, over to Acts chapter 3. In Acts chapter 3, what you got happening here is that Peter and John are going to go up to the temple the ninth hour and they're going to pray. But what I want to let you know is sometimes on your way to serve God, you got to serve God outside of the church too. Go ahead, come on to prayer. Bring your neighbor, bring your friend that they may obey the glorious gospel of Christ. But sometimes you got to stop and help somebody. And the Bible says, and there was a certain lame man who was lame from his mother's womb. He was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple called Beautiful. Meaning, this was a regular routine for his friends to get him or somebody and lay him at the gate. That he might ask all. Now, Peter and John are not there for him, but God sometimes will bring things in your way to see what you can do. Always be ready to bless God and glorify God on your way. Yeah. Now, 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 the man said here, the man said here, he's asking, he's asking for money. He said, he asked alms of them that entered into the temple. Now, verse 3 said, who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked alms. What he don't know is the preachers are broke. They ain't got, the preachers are brought, uh, back there in Marshall Keeble days when he was preaching, when he got rid of preaching, you know when they gave him a chicken? And some, and, and some potatoes. Because that was the climate. Here in our Bible, Peter and John, they don't have anything. But, they may not have no money. You may not have everything that you want. But if you got God, you got everything you need. Oh, I think I said something. See, our problem is, too many times, even though that's a true statement, we're slow to grasp that we got everything we need. You got everything you need. You in a relationship, and that rascal say, I'm gone, say bye. Because if he was yours, he stayed. If he leaves, he ain't yours. Amen. And if he playing games, he ain't yours. Amen. What I'm trying to say is, what you saying, preacher? God will give you what you need. Y'all ain't got it yet. Sister Bethea had the opportunity to marry a nice, tall, thick, you know, muscles all over the place guy. But he wasn't the one. He was just holding my spot for me. <laughs> because, listen, because I'm trying to tell you, God would give you what you need. Peter and John ain't got no money, but they got what the man needs. So when she met me at the skating rink, we met at a, at, at a denominational church because we were about to go to a skating trip. We was in our senior year of high school. And, 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 and when she met me, uh, and came down, looked at her, I said, but she's good looking. 
And when she met me, she came down and she asked me what time it was. And you know, I'm so I just threw my watch out. Boom. <laughs> she, 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 and she looked at it and went back and sat down and and, 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 and then we got to the skating ring and she's skating and I'm, I, I'm leaning against the wall with my skates on. You know how you know how cool when you really can't skate that good. You ain't, you ain't dare to skate. And when she came around and the guy just got off work she was skating with and she came around and let her hand go and rolled over to where I was and said, that guy smell. And I said, you, you need to stop talking about people. She said, well, can you skate us? I got on skates, don't I? <laughs> Why am I doing that? I'm testing and she's serious. Make a long story short, we skate had a great night. And just when it was time for us to go, I had nothing to write with. Nothing, no pen, no nothing. And she just, I, I, and she said, hey, my, and she about to go, and I had nothing. She said, just remember my telephone number, uh, 2766914. And left. Now, if she wasn't for me, if God didn't give it to me, I wouldn't remember the number. about getting what you think you want. I don't know how this world works, but I know how the Lord's church works. The world says, the world says, uh, try it out, and if you don't like it, return it. That's the world. God said, one man, one woman, for life. On the back of your marriage license, it has no instructions. <laughs> nothing. You can run and get it when you get home. Nothing, nothing, nothing. And you be lying if you think you see return date. Ain't no return date on there. Focus, focus, focus. Not only that, he focused on them. Now, of course, he expected something. The text just said, and he gave heed to them, expecting to receive something. See, when you look at this whole passage right here, he has expectation, but it's on the wrong thing. Listen, when the Bible tells us no weapon formed against us shall prosper, he means that. That means that you can't be taken out by nothing but yourself. All right, y'all didn't get that. Y'all will shout about that later. The only person that can stop you from going to glory is you. That's good. That's good. See, the thing about the power of the blood of Jesus Christ, for as long as you apply it, it works. These men right here looked on him, expecting something. Verse 6 says, and Peter said to him, what? Silver and gold? 
I have none. I can see him jumping like, what? What do you mean, Selvin? I, I thought you told me to look at you. If I had known, I wouldn't have looked at you. But what you got to understand is, is that they did have something. They didn't have what he wanted, but they had what he needed. The Bible says here, but such as I have, I give unto me. I, ain't, I don't got what you want, but I got what you need. Right now, North Church of Christ, God may not get, give you what you want, but he'll show enough to give you what you need. All you got to do is trust him, love him, glorify him, and they that wait upon the Lord, he going to renew thy church. But in the meantime, the same way y'all worship today, you keep worshiping now. Keep doing that. Because I could feel the energy sitting over there. I could feel the power that these folk are up in here praising God. And, it makes, and let me tell you something about, about revival. Revival is contagious. See, folk, folk, folk will come back next week when you're doing this. Because they're going through a mess out there. And they come here on the Lord's day to, to, to unload that mess. And to get some Jesus, some glory, some power, some might, some understanding in their heart. That's what they're here for. That's what I'm here for. I drove up here for one reason. Because Brother Turn Wood was a, the first time I met him, he represented y'all well. Kind, nice, talking to me y'all nice. Hey, brother, how you doing? It's me, Turn. I like this guy. And then he represented y'all. He, listen, he didn't have what I wanted, but he had what I needed. Hey, what happened last night? Well, this morning when I woke up, I forgot my tie to this suit. I text Brother Woods. He didn't respond back. I'm saying, oh, man. Now, he did. In fact, when I checked, he did respond, but I didn't see it. And, and when he saw me in the parking lot, he said, here, bro, I got, the, I got two blue ties for you. I said, man, I don't need the blue ties. My wife talked me into wearing the pink. <laughs> and when I looked in the mirror at it, I was like, I, I, I like that. <laughs> See, he, listen, listen, listen. God knew what I wanted. But she gave me what I need. Why are you saying that, brother? Because I'm old school. I used to be scared of pink. I mean, I'm, I'm still ain't into that pink, pink, pink. I'm just, I'm just saying. I, I'm just saying. But, 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 but. but when you learn, when you learn like this man is about to learn, to just See what Peter got. See what John. Give God a chance to. Before you go and try to fix it yourself, give God a chance to fix it. Give God a chance to work it out. Give God a chance to bless you. Look at here. The Bible says here in verse number um, uh, six, one more time. Peter says, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have I given to thee. In the name of Jesus Christ uh, 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 of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Now, wait a minute. I know sometimes we think that's too much. Can God really do this? Notice, when he said rise up and walk, the text didn't say immediately he jumped up. It said Peter reached down and grabbed him by the hand. Just, I love the fact that when God does these things here, the Bible said in verse 7, and he took him by the right hand and lifted him. Listen. Listen. Sometimes God say stuff that blow your mind. God say stuff you don't get. God say stuff you don't understand. It blows your mind. I, I met my wife on an accident. 
She met me on an accident. Oh, y'all ain't got it yet. My mother told me that my younger brother wanted to go skating and he cannot go unless big brother take him. I wasn't planning no skating that night. <laughs> I just bought me a half a cheese steak, had a Pepsi and some french fries. I was gonna go watch um, a Mission Impossible. <laughs> but God said no. So my brother came and said, tell you what, please, 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 and if you go, I'll pay your way. I said, all right, I'll go. My wife, who rarely ever went out, was home not feeling well. One of the neighbors came over and said, she don't want to go skating by herself, would you go with me? My wife told me, yeah, but I'm not feeling good, and plus you have to check it with my mom. See, that's an obstacle. But she went to the mom, and mom who only know the word no, That night, said yes. That night says yes. That's how we got to meet up and going on a trip. Who, is, who does stuff like that? Who does stuff like that? Why did I go on this skating thing? Why did she go on this skating thing? Why did we sit on the same pew? Why did she want to check out my watch? She was hitting on me. She don't usually do that. It was something about that little short black guy. <laughs> that, that, that got her attention. It's God. Some of y'all don't even like dark chocolate, but it's the best. I'm, I, 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 I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm just saying, I'm just saying how God set stuff up the way he's setting stuff up for this beggar right now. God's setting all this up. The Bible says he reached down, grabbed him up, and immediately, see, once, once he obeyed by getting up, God did his thing by saying immediately his feet and ankle bones receive their strength. What do you learn right here? Sometimes God waiting for you to make the first move so he can bless you. Some of us miss out on our blessings because we won't make the first move. We won't step out on faith. Sometimes you just got to step out. Now, I understand for those deep thinkers. Well, I, I get it. I got the work say, yeah. it's gotta be on the point dash two of the spectrum. Cause I don't know what signal she's sending. I don't wanna send that. I get, I get that. I get some of us are, we, 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 we're cautious. We're guarded. But when it comes to faith, faith is supposed to give us a new reliance that if God says it, that settles it, whether we ready or not. That's the faith right there. And I love here, it says his feet and his ankle bone receive their strength. Do you know what happened when God blessed this man? In verse number eight, he go into re revival mode. He about to have his own personal revival. What does it say here? And he, leaving, yeah. stood up, yeah. walking. Yeah. Lord have mercy. If you just got your legs back, yeah. and they're working like new legs, can you, what would you be doing? When you know you go, I mean, I mean, I'm, come, 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 let me get down here on the floor. All of a sudden, I'm crippled when I get up. God get, Then all of a sudden, I get it. All, all, all of a sudden, 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 all of a sud
What else would it say? He want what? Running? In Jesus' name. <laughs> and when you look, and when you understand all of these things, in verse number 8, and he leaped, stood up, walked, entered with them into the temple, walking, leaping, praising. Don't tell me it's unscriptural to walk and leap. It's just unscriptural to do it when you ain't got nothing to do it for. Listen. Listen. Don't get me wrong. I think when God does something for you, have a revival for him. Now, I don't mean hang from the lights. Don't be walking on the back of the pews. Don't be on, no, no, no. What I'm talking about is the way you did it this morning. Where you sung with all your mind. You praised God with all your mind. When you felt like standing up, you stood up. When you felt like raising your hand, you raised your hand and said, thank you, Jesus. I'm talking about doing that expression. The same way this man gave his expression when he went running, leaping, and praising God. And it said, and all the people saw him walking and praising God. If you are in a situation where you are afraid to, to, to give God glory, give God honor, give God praise, then I'm telling you that the Bible is right when it showed us that Peter went down, helped the man up who made the first move, and then God strengthened his ankle bones, made the second move. Sometimes you gotta be willing, even in the midst of all the stuff you go through, you gotta be willing to make the first move. And you gotta be confident of it in yourself. You got to, don't, don't be selfish about it. Don't be, don't, see, sometimes we can be, we, we, we can be selfish. Don't be selfish. We got to learn to do great things in the kingdom of God. Now, 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 I'm going to close this out by going back to Isaiah. Isaiah. And what I want is Isaiah chapter number uh, 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 40. I'm almost done. 40. And the verse I want, the verse I want is verse number 25. And it says, to whom then will you liken me, or shall I be equal, saith the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high, and behold who hath created these things, that bringeth out their host by number, and calleth them all by names, by the greatness of his might, for that he is strong in power, not one faileth. That's God. Keep on going. O Israel, my way is hid from the Lord, my, and my judgment is passed over from my God, meaning y'all think, Israel think, God don't know that they aren't all in. But God says here, in the next verse, he said, Why sayest thou, o Jacob, and speaketh, O Israel, my way is hid from the Lord, and my judgment is passed over my God? Hath thou not known, hath thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord that created the ends of the earth, Faineth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. We got to understand that we serve a powerful God that is able not only to bless that beggar because he just said how great he is, but can bless 
our lives, but we have to be willing to do it. I'll close out like this. We got to do what the Bible says do. It reminds me of the man who had the parrot. This guy had a parrot in his store, and the sisters would come in there, and they would get their, they would get their weave. Now, now, now listen, that was, weave wasn't in style then. Right now, weave's in style, and us men love them. Okay? There's some of us, we are natural men, we want natural, we love that too. We love it all. But sometimes, People can get sensitive about it. And this woman was one. So she goes in the store and she looks at the parrot. And there must have been a lot of weave walking around because he said weave, weave, weave. <laughs> and she looked at him. And she left out, came back the next week and looked at the parrot. And the parrot looked at her and said, weave, weave, weave. And she got so mad, she went to the owner and said, owner, I come here all the time. I, I, I patron your store all the time and I'm getting sick and tired of this bird out front. And if you don't do nothing with him, I ain't coming here no more. And she goes and he grabs her and, and, she, and she spent a lot of money in there. So he grabbed the bird and said, bird, stop disrespecting the customers, especially saying we, we, we. Don't do it, you do it next time, you cook. The bird all scared, put the bird back up there. Next week the woman comes in and she looks at that bird and that bird looked at her and she looked at that bird and that bird looked at her and that bird said, you know. <laughs> you and I know where God brought us from. You and I know how good God is. You and I know the victory that he gave us. You and I know we've been in a, between a rock and a hard place before. You and I know who put food on our table, who put clothes on our back, who put money in our bank, who blesses our lives, who gives us good health, who gives us good wisdom, who continues to love us, who's there for us, who will never leave us, who will never forsake us, who are a great God, who's a powerful God, who's a wonderful God, who's a victorious God, who know your name, he knows know your title, he know your age, he know everything about you, because he's God Almighty. There's no one greater, there's no more powerful, there's no more to bless us like the Almighty God. Somebody ought to wave your hand, somebody ought to say, thank you, Jesus. If you're out there right now, and you have not obeyed the gospel, well, stay standing up. Everybody stand up. Come on. Everybody stand up. Everybody. God is too good to sit down right now. Everybody stand up. Now, maybe you're out there, and maybe you're saying, these people are on fire. I want some of this. Well, God, the same way he blessed us, he want to bless you right now. Here's what God wants you to do. To be able to have a life that you think about God like that. He's my all in all. And that is he wants you to hear his word. You just read the story about the beggar. You seen what God did for that man. You see God didn't give him what he wanted but gave him what he needed. He'll do the same thing for you. You got to hear God's word. The Bible said faith come by hearing and hearing the word of God. Then after that you got to believe God's word. You got to believe God. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he who cometh to God must believe. And must believe that God is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. So not only hear and believe, then you got to be willing to repent. And that means, Lord, I done tried this stuff, it ain't working. I done tried the world's way, it ain't working. I need a new, I need a new direction. I need, to, I need to do something different. Well, I'm telling you. Try our God. Try the God we serve. Try the God we love. 
Try the God who never let us down. Try the God who broke all of our ties. You need to obey God right now by repenting. Repenting means change. Just turn around. You're going the wrong way. It ain't working. It's making you all oh, make a U-turn. Go the other way. That's all they, that's all repenting. Lord, I'm sorry I hurt you. I'm sorry I didn't listen to you. I'm sorry I messed up. Give me one more chance. Amen. Jesus said in Luke 13, and he said, I tell you, neighbor, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. He don't want you to perish now. He wants you to come on. Then after repent, confess the sweetest name one more time. Matthew 10 tells us, if you confess me before man, I'll confess you before my Father which is in heaven. But if you deny me before man, if you put man first, then I'm going to not deny you on, before my Father which is in heaven. He said, but if you, if you trust me and put me first, I'll help you out. I'll bless you before my Father. And then he said, get yourself baptized. In Acts 2.38, when those men said, men and brethren, what shall we do? When they said that to the apostle, Peter said, repent and be baptized. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. Isn't it so funny that all this victory, all this joy, all this power, all you got to do is believe and go down in some water? Do you believe you get all that just by going down in some water? You go to the beach all the time for free and don't get nothing but a sunburn. You always you take a, you, 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 you're in the saunas, we're in the saunas, the jacuzzis and all this other stuff. That, that stuff don't do nothing. It, it may help the flesh, but it do nothing for the soul. But when you go down in this water, in the name of our God, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, then you will go down into the water and you will come out a new creature in Christ Jesus. And then now God can begin to work with you, begin to bless you, begin to move in your life. And people start acting right. People start treating you better. You start acting right. You start walking right. Life start changing. You get your raises now. You get your bonuses now. You get your blessings now. And guess what? I got to say this part. And the most blessings we ever got is the ones we didn't even know we got. Some of us shouldn't have been took it away. The way these crazy folk are driving out here, some of us should be dead. But God had us look at the right time or slow down at the right time or speed up at the right time or take another road or turn that thing around. It's God, 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 Jesus. He's a good, good God. A mm-mm God. I just love him. So if you're out there and you're subject to the Savior's invitation, the water's ready, the garment's ready, the baptizer's ready, all you got to do is come down the front. Ain't that so simple? Just, just say, I want to change. I want, I want my blessings. I want my benefits that are in Christ Jesus. All spiritual blessings are found in Christ Jesus. I want them. And you just walk down the front and give us your hand. Give God your heart. Be ready to obey the gospel of Jesus Christ by being buried in a watery grave of baptism. And when you rise up, you rise up to walk in the newness of life. It is just, God made this thing so easy. I just, I don't understand why. What is it to think about? What is it to ponder? Amen. Your stuff ain't working. Amen. Trust God and let God show you a new way. Amen. If you're out there and you're subject to the Savior's invitation, We got a God that has got his arms wide open waiting for you. And he will bless you beyond measure. We're going to turn this over to the song leader right now to sing us a song. Let's sing the hymn of invitation and give somebody out there the opportunity to obey God.